Hey, what's up YouTube? Back here with Q&A number six, and we're gonna jump right into it today. First question, hey Remy, can I ask you how you do you train your legs these days? I'm having lumbar issues and I want to avoid loading my spine while training legs. Therefore, barbell squat is not an option for me. Maybe not seated leg extensions either since I want to avoid seated position as well as leg press ma machi machine because it hurts my back when I do it. Are there any good leg exercises that don't load the spine too much? Absolutely. So some nice alternatives and a few that come to mind would be a glute bridge and different glute bridge variations. So, you know, you could work with a, a traditional glute bridge, maybe do a frog bridge, and then you can progress to something like a hip thrust. And then you can start adding a little bit of weight, whether it's from a dumbbell or barbell across your hips, or you can use a resistance band. That is a very spine friendly exercise that I like to use with a lot of my low back pain clients to start out with. It's not for everybody, but people that are looking to work the legs, specifically the posterior chain, and want to avoid spinal compression and loading, glute bridge tends to be a great exercise. Other exercises that I tend to find that are, are uh, good as well and don't place too much load on spine are step ups, band pull throughs, if you're okay with the hip hinge position, the different lunge variations, split squat variations, um, and just regular like squats, body weight. You, you, there's different ways you can kind of progress squats without having to load up with a barbell on your back. Whether it's just a dumbbell goblet squat, you can use uh, a resistance band, mini bands. You can kind of play around with it, even play around with the time under tension principle. Maybe do a three second pause at the bottom. All different ways that you can train legs without having to really increase the compression force. So those are a few options that I would suggest to start with in terms of training the lower body. Um, also exercises like clamshells, mini band side steps, uh, hip, hip band marches. So placing a mini band under your feet and just marching with it. Those are also good options to kind of train some of the more isolated muscles such as your hip flexors and glutes. Great little exercises that I like to incorporate with a lot of my clients. So there's some ways you can kind of train the legs, plenty of different ways, but if you're really unsure, my best advice would be to hire a trainer or a coach out there that I can teach you um, how to train your legs without really having to load your spine if you're uns unsure about things. That would be the best case though, in my opinion. Okay, so moving on from that question, let's jump into our next question here. Hey Remy, do you have a disc bulge or disc herniation? Can disc bulge heal and go back to normal? So, the first part of the question, do I have a disc bulge or disc herniation? So, technically, it's a, if we want to get technical here, it's a disc herniation, but a contained disc herniation slash disc protrusion. So, not to get kind of too confused and caught up in the terms, a disc bulge can also be referred to as a disc herniation, but it's more termed as a nuclear herniation. A disc protrusion is a non, sorry, a contained disc herniation. And then a disc extrusion is a non-contained disc herniation. Then you have a disc sequestration, which is a disc herniation that is not contained and there's a piece of the nucleus that has kind of split off from the disc. Um, so that's just to clarify the terms. So what I had was the L5-S1 disc protrusion, which would be a contained disc herniation. But now the second part of the question, can a disc bulge heal or go back to normal? So this is a, uh, a bit of a tough question to answer. And I'm just gonna share my thoughts, my experience, my own research just on the topic of my what I've seen and from what I've heard. So. Going off just my own MRI reports and scans, before and after three and a half years, my disc herniation hasn't really changed much. It's still there, it still exists, yet I'm pain free. Um, so we have to define what is healing and what are we defining there? So that's the first question we have to ask ourselves. Are we defining healing in the sense that the disc has gone back to normal or are we defining healing as in the sense that I'm pain free? There's two different aspects there. I believe in most cases, like disc bulges, disc herniations, will never really go back, they will never go back to normal, never go back to the way they were. Um, but that doesn't mean they will adapt and that doesn't mean you will be pain-free. About 
two-thirds or over two-thirds of the population have a disc bulge or disc herniation yet are pain-free. They just, the reasons for that, they just either haven't gotten to a point where they've made the disc bulge or herniation so bad that it's provoked pain or they're practicing good movement patterns or there could be some genetic reasons such as getting on the physiological perspective, some of the, there could be pain receptors there that are very minimal that's just not triggering a pain response. There's a number of factors at play um, as to why, but just to kind of give you the broad perspective there. Um, so when it comes to having a disc bulge or disc herniation, you have to really look at it as improving your ability to move, your posture, understanding how the injury is created and avoid the injury mechanism, uh, improving core endurance, things like that will go a long way in making sure you're pain-free versus in a pain position. So in terms of it healing, I would say you can be pain-free, but you're never really gonna get full healing. And that's going based off research I've seen with people with disc bulges, disc herniations, my own MRIs comparison after three and a half years, as well as um, you know hearing someone like Dr. McGill kind of touch base a little bit on that. He would be kind of the guy to ask that question though too. He is the one who's done the research, so I would refer out if you really want to kind of get into the specifics of that. But as far as I've seen in terms of healing, I mean, there may have been one or two case studies where I've seen maybe uh, a disc extrusion that's almost gone back to, say, uh, it's regressed and it's almost gone back to a normal position or what we would kind of clarify as normal. Um, other than that, though, that's what I would kind of comment with regards to that question. But good question overall. Uh, moving on. Next question. I get some sensation in my heels. Which nerve can it be? And what exercise can I do to get out of this situation? Nerve flossing help me with my hamstring tightness and nerve flossing with proper ways of moving around and avoiding stressful things for lower back can help this nerve symptom go away as this is the only thing which I experience. If you're getting sensation in your heels, which nerve can it be? I don't know. I would say go see a physical therapist, a doctor, chiropractor, some sort of medical professional that can diagnose you and can give you clarification on that. You know. We're over YouTube here, and I do my best to help people out, but I'm not a medical professional, and I can't see you in person. I don't know which one it is. Instead of just kind of trying to figure out, I'd say go find someone that's good. It's so maybe someone that's McGill certified that can give you advice and go from there. Uh, in terms of exercise, same thing. Just, I would just refer out, find someone that can help you out there. Moving on to the next question, and this will be the final question. Is there any information on Zyatica in Back Mechanic or Ultimate Back Fitness and Performance? So in Back Mechanic, I believe there is a bit on Zyatica. Uh, I think Dr. McGill does mention it in the book, if I can recall. Ultimate Back Fitness and Performance, I don't recall him really talking about uh, Zyatica really at all uh, from that book, but I could be mistaken. I mean, Ultimate Back Fitness and Performance is more designed for um, the personal trainer, strength coach, kind of physio therapist that you know is training clients and just wants to understand how to prevent uh, these back injuries from developing and also just developing the ultimate back for, for performance whether it's for a gymnast or say a power lifter or a hockey athlete so other than that that is it for uh, today's q and I hope you guys found uh, the answer to these questions helpful and I appreciate these questions guys if you have any other questions please leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to be doing it to do another Q&A uh, to answer your questions that being said, have a good weekend guys. Take care. See you later.